Hey friends, it's Steven from Make It Rad. Welcome back to the channel. So the other day, my wife ordered a simple license plate frame for the Airstream. It seems like the easiest project you could possibly do, or so I thought, I'll show you what I found. So upon removing the license plate with just the two simple bolts, I noticed that these two screws right here looked a little bit loose. So I got my screwdriver out, went to tighten them down and noticed they just kept spinning. And then I noticed they use self-tapping screws and I literally just pulled that out with my fingers. This one here, same thing. So great job Airstream on using the cheapest method possible to mount this to the trailer. So up here, those are actually longer bolts. They're not self-tapping, but they're just standard sheet metal screws. So today in this episode, we are going to fix this and make it right. Stick with me. So you saw me just remove those other two screws by just pulling them out. These other two up here appear to not be completely stripped out. So let's get in and tear those out and see what we find. So we've got just some basic sheet metal screws about two inches long. Um, they appear to thread into not only the plastic holder, but also uh, the back of the trailer. So now we've got four holes, one, two, three, four. These ones are completely stripped out and these ones appear to be holding. And then we've got some goop, looks like some type of sealant and then a loose license plate bracket. So the first thing I do when I do anything on the outside of the camper is give it a quick spray down, clean it off. So we try to minimize scratches as much as much as possible. Okay, so I brought you inside the camper. It's a little easier to film in here and we can take a look at what this was mounted with. So we've got some standard, looks like sheet metal screws. You can see this is a 2023 model. It's about a year old and you can see that those screws aren't looking that great. There's some corrosion on them. These ones are not self-tapping. They're the upper ones that are longer. And then the ones that were loose are these self-tapping screws. Again, looking not the best shape for how new this is. And these self-tapping screws, if you look at like how those work, they basically just drill through and then, you know, thread in. The problem is, is the holes that they drill through when you've got them in like a power drill aren't very clean. And half the time, you know, those things drill such big holes and you don't get much bite from those threads and then they just strip out. So <laughs> Airstream, you could improve here. Um, this is a case of something well designed and not well executed at the factory. They could have done a better job. Um, so what we're gonna replace that hardware with, I went to the hardware store and I found some M4 hardware. So um, you can see it's just standard M4. These are 50 millimeters and this to replace the shorter ones is 25. And the key to this is going to be, I'm gonna hand this off to my other hand real quick, a riv nut. So Airstream's made out of rivets, right? So I figured a riv nut is going to allow me to put these machine screws into the side because that has M4 threads inside of it. So I'll put four of those in and then that will allow me to put those four pieces of hardware in and thread it in like an actual bolt. And to make sure that that hardware holds up a little longer, we have some anti c so that should help. We've got an aluminum riv nut that I had to specially find for the Airstream because I didn't want to put a steel one in the aluminum body for uh, corrosion purposes. And then these are stainless steel hardware. We will put some of the um, anti-seize on there to help with corrosion and maybe, hold, maybe it won't look like those ones do in a year. And then of course I had to buy just to be safe some sealant. This is clear. Gray would probably work as well. I'm going to use literally a dab at this, but I had to buy the whole tube. So um, I'll probably just poke a hole in it, use a couple dabs on the riv nuts as I put those in just to be safe. Um, being more safe than Airstream, they just put holes in the side and said, eh, it won't leak. <laughs> but we're going to try to do a better job here. So that this is the mission. Four riv nuts, four hardware, anti-seize, and some of the, the Sika sealant. So let's see how it goes. So back at the rear of the Airstream. So these rib nuts, the little barrel on there, I don't know if that's gonna focus, but the barrel on these is right around six millimeter. Again, these are M4 metric six millimeter barrel um, rib nuts. And if you put that into a converter into inches, it's like 0.236 of an inch. So smaller than quarter of an inch. Um, 
right around 1564 drill bit, but what we are going to do, or what I'm going to do is drill a 730 seconds hole because I don't want to drill too big of a hole on accident. So we're going to start with 730 seconds. We're going to test fit, just it shouldn't fit in there, but we're going to try and just see because I'd rather add the hole obviously smaller than, than too big. So 730 seconds first, then we'll probably step up to 1564 and get going. So it's always a little nerve wracking drilling into uh, obviously an expensive Airstream, but I drilled the 730 seconds hole. It's just a tad too small as I was hoping. So now what I'm going to do is just step one up in the drill bit size to 1564, which is what should work. I'm gonna drill one hole, make sure it works, not too big, and we'll go from there. Um, you just wanna take this slow. You wanna make sure you're not drilling too far because I think you got about two inches there for you to start hitting the interior uh, skin. So you don't want to do that. So just take your time, go slow, and uh, it should work out just fine. Okay, so 1564 drill holes are done. They were just a tad small, which works out exactly with the math. So all you do after you drill the hole, if it's a real clean hole, just wiggle the drill around a little bit just to make it ever so slightly larger. And this should just be almost like a press fit in there. And you can see it just sits right in there. Um, pretty darn good. Maybe I'll zoom in for you um, once I get the others in there, but you just barely press it. Now this skin, obviously it's pretty thin and it'll bounce around when you're drilling it. So you just want to take your time um, I'm not, I wouldn't say go up to a quarter inch. It might be easier, but I would just be too afraid to drill too big of a hole. So I'd say 1564 and just kind of move it around a little bit, just make it ever so slightly larger and these, these will slip right in there. Okay, so now here you can see all four rib nuts just sitting slightly in there. I just set them in there to make sure that each one would fit the hole. Now, these are aluminum rib nuts, so when you put these in, you have to be really careful that you don't compress them too much, because what that will do is uh, the rib nut tool will just pull the threads right out of those, and you'll be <laughs> kind of be back to square one with uh, stripped out holes in the side there. So um, proceed with caution. Uh, just go slow. Don't pull on those too hard. Make sure that uh, they sit in there just, just snug. And then I am going to put some Sika Flex around each one of those before I uh, set it in place, just as a precaution, just to make sure that those, those don't leak any water. So put you back up on the uh, tripod. Okay, so setting the rib nuts went well. You can see the uh, M4 bolts going right into their, their new homes there. Didn't strip out any threads, that's great. These aluminum uh, rib nuts worked out quite well. Um, I did check the plastic part and the bolts slide right through this piece and also slide right through the light here. 
But behind that, there is another hole. I think you can see it there. That hole right there, which is a little small. So we're gonna drill that out because what I want the bolts to do is pull this in tight. And if they thread into the plastic, well, they might bottom out before it actually pulls the plastic tight to the airstream. So I'm just gonna drill out those little holes right in the top of that, just so the bolts slide through rather than thread through that piece of plastic. And we should be almost set to go. Before I thread this all the way in, I will be using some anti-seize on these threads just to prevent corrosion as much as possible. Okay, so here we have the finished product. We have the license plate bracket with four M4 bolts. The upper ones are 50 millimeters, bottom ones are 25, shorter. Everything is properly mounted. That is not going anywhere. And that is probably the world's longest license plate bracket install video ever. Um, wish it would have came factory quality, but we do what we gotta do. So that's not going anywhere. It shouldn't leak and it shouldn't corrode because we've used both the anti-seize on the bolts and some Sika on the actual rib nuts in there. And those are aluminum rib nuts. So again, easy project, just a little time consuming, but when you want something done right, there you have it. So if you enjoy this content, please subscribe. You know, one of the things doing this is I've learned is uh, I really need to get another camera between going from holding the camera like I am now to the tripod this takes forever so <laughs> please subscribe if you like this content and i will be doing some more videos shortly thanks so much take care friends see ya